Hi all, I want to take you through this Pisa Sales dashboard that I did just this morning. In this, we are going to learn how to use the new card that was released last month. I believe some people have been using it for quite some time now. Those of us who are still new will grab some one or two things from here. I'll also show you how to use the tool tip, which is also common out there. A lot of people are using it. Um, those of us who are new will also see how this is done. And uh, another thing that I did here is uh, to be able to show the trend based on sales or quantity. Uh, I also have the sales by cashier uh, on this side. And then I have the trend, the sales trend per item. So when you look at the first item, you see the sales, you see the cost price and the profit and the quantity sold on the right side. I'll show you how. I managed to do this as well okay so um, without wasting too much time let's go to our power bi uh, desktop and uh, upload our power okay so our power is a csv file let's look at it and power this is loading let's uh, look at how the background will be done they say this is how i got my background design so i will make available the colors that i use so you can design this in uh, powerpoint i've been doing it in most of my past videos you can go and watch them and learn from them uh, you can also get your own image so you can do your own design here and then save it as png and use it uh, as your background so let's go back to this side click transform data on the transform data page we are going to spend some time uh, clean our data and make it uh, better than what we have currently okay so we have only one uh, csv file when you look at it everything is part of it we have the order id the product name we have the order date we have discount we have order type id uh, we have the order detail id we have the quantity sold we have the cost price uh, and this side we have the product category name user name the company location name and uh, we have phone number address okay so what we are going to do is uh, i will create some uh dimension tables out of this and also get my fact table so this is actually the fact table but we need to work on it and uh, let's let's start okay so i'll duplicate this and this i want to get the product table So what I'll do is I want to select the product and also there is product category somewhere here. Okay. And then I'll take out, I'll remove the other columns. Now at this stage, what I'll do is to remove the duplicate. Okay, so we have five products in all. So what I'll do is to add a column in this column that will start from one i'll drag it here so i can rename this to be product id then i'll do another one i'll duplicate for the user so those are the cashiers so select here, remove other columns, remove duplicate, and then this being user. So here what I'll do is to Add the index column. Okay. 
Then the next one is to check my table again. What do I have? So product name, order type ID, order ID, quantity, first price, selling price, brand category, username, company location. Company location is only one location, I think. So we only have Accra. So we'll just take it out or create a dimension table for it. So I believe I'm okay now. So if I go to build product, there is product category also here. So what I will do is to uh, duplicate this table and call it gym product category. Okay, so at this stage, I will just select the product category name, remove other columns, remove duplicate. Okay, so I will add my index column starting from one, when it here, put that category ID and then put that category. Okay, so now it is time to merge this table. Okay, so I don't want to touch this, so let me duplicate this. So I'll just call it the pack table. Now, because I don't want to use this again, so what I'll do is to disable load. Okay, so from my fact table, I'll take out, uh, I'll match, let me just go here, home, match query. Okay, so I'm doing, the first one I'm doing is for product name so i'll bring the gym product select product name and then click ok now it brings it here what i need is the product id so let me take out all this and select only product id so i get the product id here so the next thing to do is to delete the product name column Okay, so the next one is for user. So I'll do another match. Select username, game user, select username also here, click OK. I'll go here, take out all, select only user ID and click OK. And then because I have the user ID here, I'll go and pick out the username. Okay, so now we have the last one we need to do is end product. We have the category here, we need to link it to the in product category. So let me click merge queries. that category name and I'll click OK. Now in this I'll deselect or select product category, click OK, then I'll take out the product category name. Okay, so let's go to our fact table now and take out some of the columns that we don't need. So here we have order date, we have order ID, discount, we'll not use it. Order type ID won't be used, take it out. Order detail ID will not be used as well, we take it out. Uh, there is unexpected error, so let me roll back. Okay, so discount, I'll select discount, order type ID, I'll press control, order detail ID, let 
let me go to my right product category name we have that already and product username company location is only one so we all know it's StarCraft and we'll be using it we have phone number address that won't be used so let's remove columns okay so I think we are okay now so let's close and apply Going to take a while. After this, we'll go and check the relationship. We'll create our calendar table, create our measure tables, and uh, start working on our visuals. Okay, so we have our tables loaded now. Let's go to our relationship and see if everything is okay there. Before we create our calendar table. So we have the fact table here. We have the category table here, which is linked to the product table. So let me grab the, uh, the product table here. The fact table is down here. This guy is down here. Okay, so so you can see it's like everything is okay, very good. So the next thing to do is to create our calendar table. So new table. it then max order it then we create our month table and then the month in this table so new column another M which will be the full name okay so we have this now the next thing I want to do is to sort my month by the month index 
Then I'll go to my relationship site and link the map to the other table. That is to the path table by the date. So this will come here. Okay, so relationship created. So we can start working on, on our stuff now. Now, what we need to do, if you look at the uh, fact table, we have the quantity selling price and the cost price. I want us to create the total per column. So the total for selling price and the total for cost price for each column. So I'll select this and add new column. So this will be cost total. It will be the quantity times the cost price. And I will do the same thing for the selling. So new column. Selling total is equal to quantity times selling price. Okay, so I will now go and create my measure, my measures table. So let me go here, select enter data, and this will be called measures table. This one, all measures. Okay, so for all measures, the first measure I need to add, if you look at this, what we have here, we have the sales, the cost, we have the profit, number of orders, and the quantity sold. So let me go here and start creating the measure. So number one, new measure. This will be sales is equal to sum of my selling total that I created. Another measure that one will be the cost, and it will be sum of cost price. So, cost will be sum. Cost price, cost total. So, another measure that will be for profit. So, this will be sales minus cost. Another measure for number of orders for the entire period. So this will be orders. And 
then it will be number of orders. When you look at the table, we have duplicate. If you look at, uh, if you go to the fact table, for example, for orders, we have duplicate. So the only way we can handle that is to use the distance. So let me click the fact table. We have duplicate in there. You see this case, for example, we have duplicate here. So what we have to do to avoid uh, having the wrong number is to use the distance. So let me go back to orders and say this thing counts. The next one is the number of uh, that's a quantity sold. So new measure. So quantity sold will be equal to sum quantity. Okay, so now we have some of our measures ready. We can start working on our, our visuals. Okay, so the first thing to do is to bring in our background. Let me go to view and bring in the format. Okay, so for our background, I'll go to canvas background go for the background we created okay now for us to be able to see it we just have to make this one zero and i want this to be fitting okay so now we have this ready here let's work on our visual so I'll go to my home and then click here and bring in the new part. Okay. So the first thing to do, let me just resize it. Okay, so we need our sales first. That's number one. We need our cost. That's number two. We need our profit, number three. We need number of orders, and then we need a quantity sold. Let me take this out. Okay, so taking a while okay so let me resize this to get to this side now I want to bring in the icons uh, first of all let me take out the background size the star no background okay so I want to bring in the icons but before then let me go to cards and say for all of them i want the image to show the shadow to make it nicer for the image i want all of them to be left and then i need the ascent bar okay so let's start bringing in the icons so for the first one i need to select the sales for example so when i select the sales 
I can go here browse go to icons so for sales I can select this okay and then for course let me select course remember to select course and select the course icon I'll make this also available I downloaded it from icon state so let me put in the course okay so for profit remember to select profit go for the icon there is one I use for profit okay so this and then the next one is the number of orders so I select orders here I'll browse get my orders I have some beautiful address here so I put it here for that I think it's uh, smaller so I will not make it auto let's make it 50 and see that's okay uh, 70 mm, that's not bad okay so for quantity sold let's select quantity sold browse and uh, use this okay so now i want to change the size the font size so let me go to call out i'll use uh, i want to use this change this to 25 is it okay yeah good now i want to change the color the font color okay so the color i use is something like this this yeah okay um yeah let me use 69 okay yeah now for this side that is for the asset bar I'll use the same color no that is for all oh, sorry quantity so is, is still selected and that is why so I'll go here I want to make this a little bit wider it depends on how you want yours to be and then i'll make the color the same for all of them okay now it's left with the label so i'll go back to my call out there's label here and then i'll give it the same color same font okay now it's left with only the background this here this should be in uh, shape I think no it's in cash yeah the fill And then for this, I'll use F7. Yeah, 
E B F T. Okay. So this is not bad. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is this side. So I need this chart and the, the pi chart down here. So let's do that also quickly. This will take the cells and then it will take the match. Okay, so let me quickly format this. The background should be out. No background. For the y axis, title is out. For the x and then for the y also title is out and uh, I don't also need this yeah so this is okay um, the title also is not needed I'll put a customized title there so we have this here and uh, I'll do the same thing for the pie chart so I'll bring in a pie chart down here and then for the pie chart, what I want to use is also the sales by category. Okay, so no, not category ID. Let me select category. Name. Okay, so what we need to do is to do some quick formatting. Um, I don't need the title. I don't need the legend. Okay, the background should be out. Okay, and uh, we change the color for both. So let's look at what we have here. Okay, so we use the same color. So for the first one, what I want to do for the bar, the columns. Six one eight seven three. That's too deep. Let me use AC zero seven DD. Okay, so this is better. And then for the title, I'll use the other, uh, I mean, for the X axis. I'll use the other one, so the one I used earlier. Let's make this a bit bigger. Go here and use this. Okay, so for this, also for the slices, let me use this for him. Okay, so now there is something interesting happen, happening here. When you look at this, for example, if you select sales, you have it like this. And then if you select quantity, you have it like this. And this applies to both of them. So we have to create some uh, parameter fields. So we'll call it measures, uh, uh, measures switch. So here, I'll go to property, remember that is in modeling 
yes so here float let's call it Maya switch and then here what we need is the sales and quantity sold and then we add a slicer to this page so it will give us a slicer which will format to look like what we have in the original uh, dashboard okay so for this what i want to do is use the tiling so i'll go to my slicer settings use the tile take out the slicer header resize it we take out the background as well go here take out the background and uh, drag it to the top here okay so what happens is that when i select sales it should select sales here when i select quantity it should select it should base it on quantity now one thing I forgot is to add the data labels to this. Okay, so for my data labels, I want the values to be the same font I'll be using on this one. The color will be something like this and then it should be a bit bigger okay so now what we need to do next is to select this go here pick out sales and bring in our measure switch Okay, so you can see now, when I select quantity sold, it shows only quantity here. If you select sales, it shows sales. So that's it. Now the same thing should be applied to this guy. So let me go here, take out this, add, select this and then we are good so when i select quantity sold you see it shows in quantity and then this also shows in sales for both of them now i need to put a label here that says okay so you have selected this and you have selected that now what one thing i forgot to do here is to always make sure the selection is a seller so let me quickly put a label here, insert text box, and then drag it here. For the label, we want everything and should be this, and then the font color should be this. Now I'll go here and take out the background. Now for the what I want to do, let me first go to my switch. the major switch table I want to add another column here so be print 
by sales and then another column here the same thing when by quantity so by quantity okay so I'm done then I'll go and change the column to name create a major call table that will use this uh, title that will use this so let me go here so this has given it value 4 but I'll give it name So when I go here, I look at my title, my label, go to formatting. First of all, let me create a, a new measure that I'll call title. Okay, so title should be equal to um, let's say print by okay, so maybe I have to do some adjustments on it. So here we will say selected value measure switch name so this guy will take that as title so let's go here, we'll give it a title and then we'll go here and select title so you can see here sales trend by sales trend so what I have to do is I think I made a mistake in uh, my measure switch so here we should just leave it sales this also will be quantity so when you come here it will repeat so trend by sales that's it and then when i select the other one you'll see trend by quantity yes trend by quantity that's it okay now let's do our tool tip so this we can call it overview this we can call it product tool tip so product kitty now i want this to know that it's going to be a tool tip so i'll go here Canvas settings is a tool chip, and then here I want the background to be one of my colors, so this, and then for it to show, I'll bring this to zero. So here we need this. like this and then we bring in the cells by product name okay so let's quickly format this it's not going to have a title take this out but the title is still there for why so I'll go in and take this out and then down here I'll do the same thing the title is also there ah uh, no so I need to keep the name 
in this shape it down on the other side on white okay so we have that max area width I want to see the names So change this to this, change the color to one of our colors. Now for the vials also we need to change the color to something like this. Okay, for us to have it a bit different, let me go back here change this to this now let me take out the background so that we can see what we have down there so this is it i need to add the data labels okay so for the data labels i can change the fonts give it a some nice color Okay, so uh, no. No, so let's make it set this right again good and make it uh, a bit bolder in the same point. okay so this looks okay so let me go back to the overview I want when I put my cursor here it shows that as positive so I'll select this visual, go to properties, go to tooltip, report page, and select productivity. I'll do the same thing for this guy here, select productivity. Now when you put your cursor here, look at what we have. Yeah, so you put your cursor here, this helps a lot. So when you put your cursor here, you know how the items fare during this period of the year. Okay, so the next thing to do is to bring in our multi row card. So let me go here. Bring it here. So I'll quickly add cells. And then it's going to be by cashier. So I'll go to user. Okay, so let's quickly format this. For the background, we take it out from here. For the call out value, let's see if we can add the title. Category labels will be out. For the call out values, Let's select our user column and font. Give it this one. And then we change this. Okay, I can make this one darker. So we have this here. Go 
close down here. Then I can add my label. So let's insert a new label just to give it a title. Then let me pick out the background. Good, so this is okay. Now, the next thing we need to do, drop this here. The next thing we need to do is this part. So you can see the sales trend here. For each uh, product, you can see the sales cost and profit and the quantity sold from this side. So there is a bit of work here. So let's start. I need the line chart. So I'll bring in my sales by product. Uh, by month and then each product so we can see how it is now what we need to do is to put this in small multiples Okay, so let's format it to make it one colon five rows so that we can have all the five items in one row. So we go to the small multiples. It should be five rows. And then one colon. Okay, so I can drag this here, make it smaller and get some space. Bring it to the top here. Bring this also a bit down. Okay, so the next thing to do is to take out this, all this, and also from this side. Okay, so let's start the formatting. No background. For title, we can leave it. But we can take this out. We can take the whole X out. We we'll do the same thing for Y. Each title is out. And then we we'll do the same thing here. This out. Now, with this, let's do some sorting, sales, and then it should be descending. Okay, so we can drag it a bit here. Yeah. Now, I want to uh, show the end 
the beginning and the end. That's the mean date and the max date value. Now, what we have to do is to show the data labels. I want to show the markers, but not too big, so I can reduce it a bit. Okay. Now, what I want to do is to show only the beginning and the end and take out everything from within. So it's kind of crowded. So um, I'll create two measures. So let's quickly create that. So I'll go here, select here, and click new measure. taking a while okay so this will be called sales max date so we we'll do if the max month index is equal to max all selected one index again comma calendar month index going to show the sort yeah you can you can format this but for us to get uh, save some time i just put everything on one line so let's copy and do this same thing for main date so we create another measure PC is kind of slow. Okay, so this will be sales main date. So here it will be main. So this will be minutes. Okay, so here what we do is to add mass and main. Okay, and now we go back here, format it, take out the legend. That's number one. Now for The data labels I'll select only sales and take it out so that it will only show us the one at the beginning and end okay so I want to make them I want to change the color for this so I can go here change the font first the usual font 
and then change the color to maybe something like this and then make it a bit bigger sorry this is happening to actually sales let me select all Okay, so I go here, so I take this, and then I make it a bit bigger. Okay, so now this line here, I want to change it to one of these colors. So let me go here. Now the title should be changed. That will be sales point. Okay, so now the next thing to do is to bring in this and also this. And this has the sales cost and profit. Okay, so let me go here. Bring it down here. So select the background just to be sure. So we are going to use sales, cost, profit for each item. Very good. Now because we have the names here on this side we need to take out all this so let's format it pick out the title pick out this and this for the x as well pick out this and this now for the background we take out this okay so this looks okay so you can see tropical is here the next one aloha is here this is also here this is also here now i want to give it some space so that it will go a bit up so I'll select it again. For the bus spacing petty. Now I'll change the colors. So the first color, so for the first one is uh, this for this is one eight seven three. Now for the second one, there's nine F two one eight three. And then for the last one, dash BC93 F6. Okay, so now this we can reduce it to come this way, then so that we can add the third one. The third one only has quantity sold. So let's do that quickly. So I'll copy this, paste it, put 
put it on this side let's go this way a bit yeah so this way okay but in this case we are only using uh, quantity so I'll go here take out all of them select quantity so take out the rest this this and this okay so I've taken out all that let me change the color first Can give it anything something like this for quantity okay now because we have one bar here i want to make it three three each just like what we have on this side so i'll create some measures empty measures two empty or blank measures so let me go here select this new measure then i'll call it a blank one give it a function the blank function and do the same thing for blank two, so that I can use them as bars to push this up. So, uh, blank one, sorry, is equal to blank. Good. Then I'll create another measure, blank two. So now I will select this uh, visual and add those two blanks to it. And later uh, do a bit of formatting. My PC is kind of slow. Okay, so I'll select this, add blank one. And add blank two. Okay, so you can see now you have a smaller space. I can push this one here and then make this rather bigger. Get close. Okay, so for this. Let me see if we add the, the labels. Okay, so we have data labels here. Okay, so let me change the color. We are only focusing on this quantity sold. Okay, and then we, have, we add the data labels. the same thing for this data label okay so if that's the case we bring it back a bit yeah and uh, we change the font good now you see, so if you look at this line, we have this here. So I want to put a line here so that we know this goes all the way here. So let me quickly insert a shape. Okay, so for our shape, let me 
put it on top here so that I can change the color shape star so it is the border we can use this so it comes here so we use it to cover the line that was there and we drag it all the way here look at it this is not bad so I copy it paste Let's see. Good. I paste again. Is it okay? I paste again for the last time. Yeah. So this is okay. Uh, let's change the title of this format it a bit. So for the title, what's this? This line come down a bit. Okay, so I want to change the color. Good. Now, um, we need to add our filters, these two filters. So on top here, I'll just go no, just here. So the first one takes product category. And then add the product name to it so that you can drop it down. Okay. So let me reduce this. I need to format it to be a drop down. So what we do is to take out the background and then drag it to the top here. Then I copy it, paste it here. And this will be command. So I'll go back here, take out the product name, product category, and only select month. 
So we go in here, you can see our months. Okay. And then the next thing to do is to change the title. So select months. Okay, so uh, that's it. So you can see everything that we saw in the first one. We have them here. You can see the new card uh, released by Microsoft last month, 2023. Then you can see the filters on top here. You can see this when you select quantity, so you see in quantity. When you select sales, you see it here. So this is what I wanted to uh, share with you. Thank you so much and uh, have a nice time.